this is never good. I found this laying in the box. And I believe it's supposed to be this piece. And sure enough, it's broken off the new alternator. Yay. If you like this video, if it helped you out, do me a favor, subscribe. That helps me out immensely. Don't cost you a penny. It's free, right? What else in this world is free? Morning, YouTubers. Me again. Uh, today we're going to be working on the old cataract. It uh, decided to stop charging. And my daughter was driving to work, and she goes, Car died. Like, great. This car's pretty smart. It... it Threw up a little code and says we're going into battery conservation mode. Never knew there was such a thing. Shuts down the radio and the AC and any non-essentials. Shuts it off automatically and says nope, we're saving on the battery. So that was kind of cool. Of course, once you shut it off, click 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 click, click ain't no more coming back. So I've been cooking the battery overnight. We got her home last night. I started cooking the battery, so it's been cooking for a while. Keep it on the two amper so it won't boil over, you know. Uh, so it's probably the alternator, but I'm going to walk you through step by step how I determine that, right? I'm not just going to say it's the alternator because it's not charging, and it's possible. Uh, I know if I put a full charge on the battery, she can drive about all day on it. This car's not too hard on the batteries, I'll give you that. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and test on the battery, see what kind of voltage we got now that we've charged her up. Then I'm going to start it, and I'm going to see if the voltage changes. And we're going to go from there. But in the meantime, I'm going to take this all off, get it out of the way, get my meter ready, which I got it right here. got one of these, you know, $10 Harbor Freight specials. I have bought expensive multimeters before, and the batteries will corrode inside of them, sitting in the drawer or something, and ruin it, and then you're out $50, $100, $200, whatever that meter costs. These little cheapos, they're cheap, and they work just as good, so I don't care. I just buy the cheap ones now, and that way if it breaks, I'm not too terribly upset about it. I can put two or three of these, put one in each car if I wanted to. Uh, I don't. I've got one, but it's just a matter of running to Harbor Freight and getting another one. So anyway, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to walk you through all this and let you know what we determine. And I've already kind of done this out on the road. I brought my meter with me when she got broke down. And kind of tested on it then after I jump started it and already kind of determined it. But I am going to, uh, you know, walk you through it. But I just noticed that this headlight is starting to separate. You know, what the heck? <sighs> you know, you can't keep nothing nice. Okay. All right, so it's got deer damage. It's not nice anyway. So it's going to all have to get replaced sooner or later. But she's still banging into stuff every once in a while, so we're going to keep it this way. But anyway, let's get started. Alright, we're going to take the battery charger off because we don't want to contaminate my test here. Got my, you know, expensive meter. Turn it on. Got a little on button. Woo, here we go. It's on. Alright, and it's going to be this simple. We're going to, I don't know if you can see that, but we'll, we'll show it to you in a minute. Take the uh, red goat on red profound and black goes on black and it's not saying anything so that's not going to be working there we go okay oops trying to get this so i can use one hand on it but it's not working out so well there we go dang it all right you're gonna probably have to take my word for it because i don't know if i'm gonna be able to get this to All right, it says 12.3, okay? Let me see if I can try to do this with one hand. There we go. Can you see that 12.3 or 12.4? I think it jotted up there for a minute. So now I'm going to start the car, and I'm going to see if that changes. You know, I need to put some little alligator clips on there instead of these little pointy thingies. That would be better. But anyway, for now, let's go ahead and start the car and see just what we get. I don't know if you can hear that whining. But I believe that is the alternator that's whining like that. So we're going to get our little two does. I don't know if hopefully you can see that. If not, I'll try to show it to you again. Now, we go here, we go here, and I have It 
it is actually saying 14.3, so it is actually charging. So what is going on? Would be the question. Now I checked it last night and it wasn't charging, but it is right now because you saw when the car was off, we had 12 volts, 12.2, and now that it's running, I have 13. Point, almost 14. So that means it's charging. So maybe the battery is the problem. And what I didn't show you is when I went to go start it earlier, just a few minutes ago, it didn't want to start. And I had it on 2 amp charge all, all night. Now I, I just assumed that my battery charger wasn't working, so I put my big one on here and gave her a little boost. But now I'm going to go ahead and test on the battery and see if maybe our new battery isn't the problem. Which would be nice because the alternator wasn't cheap. And it's going to be a lot more of a big deal to, to do. So, But it seems to me the car should run off of the alternator if, you know, I don't know. But it is definitely, see if I can give you all a, another visual here. have to take my word for it. Let's, uh, let's try that. Right. There we go. See that 13.1, 13.2? Let's let it run a minute. Maybe if the alternator gets hot, it'll quit working. It was doing as much as 14. Uh-oh, now it's at zero. Uh, that's just me, I think. That's technically charging that battery. Well, I don't know what to tell you. I do hear something whining in there. Let's let it warm up a little bit. And we'll see if things don't change once it gets warm. All right, let it warm up a little bit. And uh, now we're at, I cleaned up the terminals a little bit too. Now we're at 12.7. Now I bet you if I shut this car off, in fact, it's 12.6, it's going down. I'm going to go ahead and turn the headlights, I'm going to turn everything on and see if it goes down below 12. Alrighty, now I got everything running inside the car. Ooh, see that? Barely 12. So that means it's not charging at all. 11, 9. That means it's pulling power from the battery even now. So, that confirms that my uh, alternator is Fazu. Yay! Because I don't know if you can tell or not. I'll try to key you in on this. It's right there. Way down in there. So, all this is in the way. Woohoo! Yay! So, anyway, I'm going to pull it in the shop. Let's get started. First things first, we're going to disconnect the battery. They say always disconnect the negative, but if you disconnect the negative and I've always been worried about if you disconnect the negative that the positive will still arc out. So I'm just going to take them both off. Why take a chance? Maybe that way I can check to make sure it's a good clean connection too. We'll get a, I got a little wire brush. We'll clean it all up. There we 
we go. So they get all that nice and ain't gotta worry. Now I gotta get some lugs, so I wanna charge this battery as as I'm working. So we leave this here so we can lose it. Always, you know, make sure you can lose your tools. But I've got some little lugs that are just for charging, so we're gonna get those. Well, like I said earlier, oh here's these little lug things. They're just little lug wing nut looking things and they're just just to charge batteries. That's all they're for. But I was saying that I thought maybe the the battery charger was bad and that's why letting it cook overnight didn't didn't work. So I'm guessing we're back to that. I guess that battery charger was bad. But I've got a brand new well I wouldn't say brand new, but I've got a newer one. That small one I had under the hood there, that was pretty old. And this one I've only had a few years, and it's been good so far. I like this one because it, it shuts itself off when uh, when it's fully charged and all that good stuff. So we're going to put this one on. We're going to put it on a slow boil. And, uh, you know, let that do its magic while, while we're working. That, work, that works. Okay. Oh, but it's on 40 amp. We don't want 40 amp. We want to put it on slow cook. There we go. There we go. We'll put it on 40 amp. I'm going to get ready to start it. All right, now. Where do we start? Yeah. Woohoo! I guess we start by taking all this stuff off. I'm excited. How about you? No, nope. not even a little bit. These don't look too bad. Just kind of push in on that. Whip that up. Nope, maybe not. What the heck? What is it? We're going to need my spec to get the controls. I'm going to start with the fun stuff first. Well, just because it's in the way. Just four bolts. One, two, three, four. Take this off. Get it out of the way so we can get down in here. I could probably wiggle it out. But when I get to about this area, it's not, it won't come out the alternator. So we're just going to go ahead and zing these off. I'm going to start with the harder bolts first. Always start with the hard stuff first. And whoop, those are 10 millimeter, I thought. They are. So how come it's not going on? Oh, it's got a little, it's got a little something, something in the way. You know, it's always that way. So we'll just do it this way. Yeah. Weird the way engineers do things, you know, they make it so you can't get a wrench in there. But fortunately, these are loose enough where I'll just take them out by fingertip itch. Yep, just like, golly, how long is this thing? Godly, why's it got to be that long? All right, now I'll get the other four. First things first, I gotta get this tensioner. Take this belt off of here. I'm gonna take a look at the belt once I get it off. It looks okay, so I was gonna replace it, but I think I'm gonna leave it alone. Cause it looks okay. I'm not sure which way this tensioner goes. It's got a three-quarter inch square in it right here to fit your ratchet in. And so I don't know if it goes. Yep, it goes that way. Okay. So you just stick your ratchet in the in the hole there, and you pull up on it until you can get your belt off and you just gotta weasel it off of there come on baby there we go and there we go okay and then just throw you know your ratchet into the bottom of the car somewhere that's just to test it all right so that's off of there that didn't have a whole lot of play in it that's weird maybe it's supposed to go the other way i don't know it worked. That's all that matters. Now, I don't know if you can see that. I don't think you can. Getting a good camera angle is nearly impossible on this. We've got some funky brake thingy going on here. Uh, and then we've got the alternator here. And there's a bolt here going that way. I hope these are the only two bolts. From what I can tell, that 
is the case. One going up here. One down here where nobody can see, including me. So I am going to take the bottom one out first, and I'm going to have to use... I'm going to use a 15 millimeter ratcheting box end. Try to get that one out first because it's the hard one. And then we can get this one that we can all see. And then we'll hopefully worm it out of there enough to get at the wiring. Yeah, okay. Why do they build cars like this? That's crazy. Just gets more and more fun as we go. There's a bolt that I can't hardly get to. And the bottom, of course, it's in the bottom. Sorry about the buzz. That's that. That's my uh, battery charger. We're going to take the tire off, and then there's a little cover under here. We're going to pull out, and I should be able to access that bolt. I'm sure there's some battery-powered ones out there that might do the job, but... <coughs> this is what I've got for now. Since we're in the shop... Come on, baby. Nothing is ever easy, but don't let it scare you folks, do it yourself, there we go, these stupid, these have got like a little, these aren't actually a chrome lug nut, they've got a little cover over, over a regular lug nut, and so those stupid things will swell, and that's what happens. <laughs> So sometimes it's a real pain in the hoochie mama to get them to get a, the socket back off. I can get a socket that's slightly bigger, but then these things will distort and then it makes it even worse in the long run. So you're better off having a <laughs> socket that fits. Oh, that one came out okay. <laughs> sometimes you get lucky, I guess. <laughs> This one I'm not too worried about because it's going to go right back on. All right, so we're going to take the tire off. I'm going to check the brakes while we're at it. Oh, they look good. All right, now, let me get you all in here to look at this. I think I'll be able to get to it from here. We'll find out. I can't really jack it up anymore. Well, I could if I close the hood because the hood's hitting my lift. Kind of chose a bad place to put it. But we're going to crawl in under here and I'll show you where we're at. Now this is going to be funsy because uh, the bolt is right here. And so I'm not going to be able to show you me getting that. But I've got this little flap up. This is all underneath the tire. That's the bolt I took out. I should have just... Over there. I don't know if I can see it. There, see it? It's the one I took out already. I could have, I could have got it from here. So that's the one i got to get now. It's over here. Right here. So... That's where we're at now. I'm not going to be able to have you guys in here while I pull that out so I'll show you how I did it but for now I'm just gonna have to yank her out of here the best I can and then we got to get this one out I think I can probably get that one maybe with a ratchet maybe not just because once it starts to back out so we may be just wrenching on this one a little out of time as well it's got this little guard on it that makes you so you can't get your wrench on it that's just stupid but we'll just use an opening wrench <sighs> one, one at a time just think 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 it's gonna be like this for another hour so we'll go ahead and shut the camera back off and let you all watch I'll spare you the little half turns for the next hour and a half all right we got that bolt out Got a nice flesh wound in the process. Now this is loose. Now we gotta try to get to the wires on the back side. <laughs> well, I don't know how we're gonna do that. Stop everything! I screwed up. I'm gonna show you an easier way. Just for the record, uh, you do not have to struggle with the wiring on the alternator like you watched me do. 
found out later, because when I put the alternator in, that wire on the back ended up touching something metal and shorting the battery. Yay! So, yeah, so it messed things up. Nonetheless, got it fixed. The way to avoid that is if you jack up the car and you get underneath it, you can access the bolt, the wiring on the back of the alternator rather easily. So, don't do it the way I did it. Uh, I just figured I'd tell you that before you go struggling getting the alternator out and then having to mess with the wiring, take the wiring off first from underneath the car, and then everything else will be the same. You know, you still have to go in through the flap to get the two bottom ones. You'll still have to go through the top to get the top one and the tensioner and all that. All that will be the same. But to save you some time, money, and most of all aggravation, don't do it the way I did it when it comes to the wiring on the back of the alternator. Jack the car up. You can reach in past the the cross member. Yeah, that's it. Reach in cross past the cross member, and you can get you can get right at those wires. So, just a lesson learned. I'm going, you know, seat of my pants. That's the way I fly. So if I find an easier way in the process, I'll let you know. Uh, sorry the way I look. Uh, I've been out. It is like 9,652 degrees outside right now. And I have done everything from bush hogging to cutting the lawn to pulling wiring out of a car out in the salvage yard or out in the graveyard as we call it. And let me tell you, being inside a car pulling the wiring in 1,000 degree weather, it's hot out there. And I'm talking like Jennifer Gardner heart. Hot, hot, hot. So, anyway, that's all I got to say. Do the wiring from the backside. Just figured I'd save you a little time. Back to the show. Yeah, it was a squeeze clip where you push on this and it pulls this little clip out. See how it's going out like that? I actually got a screwdriver, got it up in here and pried it. That way it gave me a little more leverage. So that's that one. That's the easy one. The hard one is going to be the big one on the back. So if I could tuck this one out of the way. This is going to be the positive cable. You just can't, there's like no room whatsoever to get in here. I don't know if I can get that from underneath. Maybe if I turn it upside down, like so. It doesn't want to go upside down. So that's going to be at the top side. You're not going to be able to get to it. Golly, Sergeant Carter. Now the fun begins trying to get this thing out of this hole. <laughs> Then we gotta worm the new one into that hole. So far, so good. It's hanging up on something. I got. Come on, baby. Golly, there we go. I think. I hope. Pray. Can't get your hands in there. Come on, old girl. There we go. So far, so good. Hey! Woohoo! This is never good. I found this laying in the box. And I believe it's supposed to be this piece. And sure enough, it's broken off the new alternator. Yay. So, I'm going to compare them. It looks like it was the right one. And i got to put this stupid guard on there. I don't know why. I don't know what it does. Um, I'm guessing maybe this alternator throws a lot of heat and there's a bunch of wiring and junk there. So maybe they put this guard on there. To... This, this alternator is hot. I don't think it should get that hot. It came with a new nut. Good, because I lost the other one. <laughs> All right. But I'm going to have to order another alternator because this was junk. So, to be continued. I just finished eating a bologna cheese and jalapeno sandwich. And a couple of whole handful of Doritos, you know. Uh, so, feeling fat and happy? They showed up with my new alternator. The one that's not broken. 
So now it's time to put it back in. Yay. I'm going to be honest, this job, whew, you, you know, before you jump in here, if you got little hands, you're good. If you got big mitts, I don't have big mitts. I don't have little hands either. But if you got big mitts, God bless you. But I've got medium sized hands, technically. If I buy gloves, they're mediums. And it's still, it's, it's tighter than a cat's whisker in there. So I'm going to try to get this in there. First thing, we're going to do things exactly in reverse. A jiggle her into position. Try to get the top bolt, leave her hanging off the top bolt because I can finagle better that. There's no way to get two hands in there from underneath. I might have, should have, could have, would have put this on the lift. That would have been a better idea. But I didn't, so we're on the ground. But if you're doing it, chances are you're going to be on the ground. So I guess, you know, this is the way to do it. I'm just old and lazy. Don't want to get on the ground anymore. Didn't sit up and getting up off the floors. Floor got lower as I got older. But anyhow, we're going to go ahead and slide this thing back in. I've always found that putting things back together, knock on wood, is usually easier. It's always easier putting back. The hardest part is getting that first bolt started because you're kind of holding it up and trying to put it in. But once you get that first bolt in, you know, everything's, you can lubricate all your bolts and, and everything goes hopefully a little smoother. Taking things off, sometimes things are stuck, loctited, you don't really know where you're going, what you're doing. Uh, I found that rear bolt by looking at the new alternator and saying, what the heck, of course it's on the bottom. But as you saw, we were able to get at that from underneath and that wasn't too, too bad getting it back in from underneath. <laughs> but anyhow, so let's get started. Going to go ahead and try to get her at least in place, and we'll go at it from there. Against my better judgment, i got to put this heat shield back on here. I don't really want to, but I'm afraid that it's shielding. There's really nothing there but a big wiring harness. But I'm afraid that if it's shielding that wiring harness, from, you know, I guess. But it would be life would be so much easier without this big, goofy thing here, but... I'm going to put it on. It gives me too much trouble. I'll, I'll maybe ditch it, but for the sake of the video, I guess we'll put it back in. Do things right, right? Don't have leftover parts. So we'll go ahead and put this on. Much to uh, my dislike. You hear my wife in the background? <laughs> she thinks that you, the camera's not going to pick it up. <laughs> but truth of the matter is, she just got back from being at the store and she just realized she's got a big hole in her pants. <laughs> so <laughs> I'll spare you. I'm not showing you all that. She's been walking around town with a big hole in her pants. She's like, oh my goodness. I got a big hole in my pants. <laughs> All right, we've got that big useless thing on here now. And we'll see. We'll see if I can't wriggle her into place. can't really show you what I'm doing in here but I can at least show you me working on it all right so got this bolt we got to line it up with all the cuck out in here well, I guess I can finish putting this in oh it's tight now because I tighten those other ones up there we go All right. 
Now, I don't, don't want to come off, so <clears throat> we'll have to do like we did on the old one. I'm just going to have to bend this little bracket here to get it off of here. It was against my better judgment to put that stupid bracket on there anyway. But oh well. It's on there now. There we go. Okay. I bent it a little, but that's okay. It's not going to affect anything. It's just a heat shield of sorts, I guess. I don't really know what it's for. But there we go. We got our, our new battery charging machine there in there. Now we got to try to put this back on. I did buy a new belt, but I'm not going to use it where'd it go well i can't find it anyway that belt looks fine it's not cracked or anything i'm going to take a quick look at it again it's probably a good idea to change the belts but we're looking at a whole new can of worms if we do so and that one looks quite good it's not cracked it's not dry it's not anything so we're going to go ahead and leave it and that'll save me a little bit of time Okay, and then we got to get my that big wrench again. And if I remember right, we pulled down on it, right? I'm sure they probably make a tool for this, but. <clears throat> Sockets work just fine. Okay, it's got to go up. So I've got it the wrong way, of course. To get all this stuff out of the way. Because it'll all go flying. There we go. Slide that over there. All right. Now let's just make sure we're going to have to feel it because I don't have... Yep, it's in that groove, and it's in that groove. Well, I'll be, folks. That went okay so far. Like I said, it's usually easier to put things back together than it is to take them apart. So now we got to put this back on here, which that was obviously the the best way to go on that one. Rather than unplugging the wires and taking a chance of messing things up. Just take it right off the bracket. Of course, it's going to be... It's going to have its, its issues, of course, because it's just the way things are. There we go. The way they do things sometimes on cars, it doesn't make any sense. I may have to build myself a car, you know, like Tesla did, but build it so it's simple to work on, you know? I think that's what Saturn tried to do back in the day, but it didn't take off, uh, you know, but these are... You know, these new modern cars are so hard trying to get away from letting you work on your own stuff. You know, but in reality, that's... That should be the way to go, really. I mean... People can't always afford to pay somebody, you know? So keep it simple. Let them... Let people hot rod at easy modifications... Shoot my neighbor, his Ford, he bought it and it ran good for a month or two and then it started messing up and he can't even get anybody to work on it. The Ford dealer won't touch it. It's like 10 years old, I think it's a 2010. It's like 13 years old. Nobody will touch it, poor guy. He just, he tried wrenching on it himself but it's got something to do with the electronic fuel injection and he don't have the, 
way to communicate with it, and nobody will touch it. Nobody will touch his truck. It's it's insane. So anyway, that's that one. That's that one. Now, if you'll remember, these two I couldn't get at. So we're just going to... Come on. Well, that one had to go open in because that's stupid. Unbelievable. Retarded. Designers, and I'm not complaining. I mean, I am a little distraught that this car kicked out an alternator already. It's only got 170,000 miles on it. You would think the alternator would be like brand new, but it's not. But like I said, you saw the transmission video where I did the transmission filter on this, and it was like brand new inside that transmission filter. So there we go. All right. But yeah, this is probably time for an alternator. I, I think other than, you know, the, the blood that you probably can't see, I think we're ready to put the battery, to connect the battery, and uh, see if she'll start. Now, some of you may have noticed that I've not put the tire back on. So this car isn't going anywhere. But I am going to start it, and I'm going to test on it before put it on because just in case I do not have the key in the on position so whatever there's all sorts of stuff clicking and these cars are electronic nightmares all of them I hear stuff running I don't think I have the key on I'm gonna go check I couldn't shut the key off because everything's electronic and so but I'm gonna go check now all right now we're gonna test this one the same way we tested the old one we're gonna test the battery by itself 12.5 all right now we're gonna start it make sure I ain't got no cords or nothing in the way well let's go ahead and start it and see what we got fully charged battery. I charged it while we were working and the battery charger shut off and said it was fully charged. So 14.8 is what she's putting out now. Much, much better than what was going on before. So I'm going to call this one a win-win. my favorite part. Right? Oh. Little, little blood on the fender, man. We'll, we'll get that off of there. But, you know. Anyhow, a little blood, sweat, and tears never hurt anybody. Alright. Yep. Another job well done. Yee-haw. Well, there we have it. Figured it out, right? Do me a favor. 
if this helped you out, you can help me out. And please subscribe. It's free. So if this video helped you to get done what you got to get done, then you try to help me get done what I got to get done by subscribing. Right? Rock on. But even if not, I do appreciate you watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you're just watching for the entertainment part of it, well, you know, I hope you liked it. If you're watching for the content of knowing how to do this, hopefully you didn't, you know, cut yourself up. I'm not really sure how to tell you not to because it's so tight in there, you're going to be fighting it. But it's not impossible. It's more about tenacity and it's more about just not giving up. You can do it. It's just you got to have that don't quit attitude. Failure is not an option. So anyhow, please subscribe. Hit the like button if you liked it, especially if it helped you out. And yeah, that's, yeah. If you're already subscribing, you guys rock. See ya.